views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice Speak up and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stanis. Well, welcome to Voices of Women. Um, Today, we're going to talk about how you can learn about knowing your purpose and how that will manifest wealth in your life. My guest is Prema Lee Guerreri. Um, Prema is committed to creating a world where everyone is empowered to live on purpose in a way that is aligned with their divine gifts and a birthright of true prosperity. Prema is a leading Vedic astrologer, business consultant, energy practitioner, and spiritual coach with more than 25 years of experience and the number one best-selling author of Your Sacred Wealth Code, Unlock Your Soul Blueprint for Purpose and Prosperity. So she empowers leaders, entrepreneurs, visionaries, and change agents to take inspired action and unlock their sacred wealth code. So we're going to learn about that today, what all what all there is to know about the sacred wealth code and how you can develop that for your life to bring um, purpose and prosperity to you. Um, So welcome, Prema. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Yes. Well, okay. So we start off with your story first. Um, We're all about stories. So how did you come into this place of discovering your purpose and passion what instigated this search for you? I and mean, we, we all kind of go through that, that, you know, when we get that aha, finally, like, or we got to shift to make things change to, to, to move you. into. Yeah. And I know you had yours too. So I'd love for you to share your story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like I've lived many lives and there's been many stories, but the story that's most relevant to um, where I am today and the Sacred Wealth Code and the work that I'm so passionate about um, helping others to open up to, you know, really be empowered um, to be living in accordance to their own soul blueprint and um, really the best of themselves is, oh, let's see, almost... Well, over 10 years ago, about 15 years ago, I opened up a yoga and healing arts center that was uh, near Seattle and just a really beautiful, like world-class space. And I've been teaching yoga for many years, but really kind of used it as this uh, guise to really teach um, spirituality in different ways, uh, Vedic astrologer and energy practitioner. And I was training teachers at the center. I had Oh, energy practitioners there as well. I mean, it was it was it was gorgeous. It was uh, I think I was a little ahead of my timeline on that one. Um, and the center did pretty well. I mean, we had like a six figure in sales business, but because of what it took to get into it and the setup and all, not that much was coming to me personally. And I really felt like I was on purpose. I really felt like I was on my my path. Um, doing the work that I was doing there and also creating the community that I was creating and and teaching the teachers and my intuitive work that I was doing personally with people. But it, it I was really overworked and my energy was definitely split and I kept trying to balance it out. Like, you know, I, I on the inside, because this is an inside out um, experience this life is for me. So I did all the shifting I could and I, but still I couldn't get the outer world, um, checkbook to balance. <clears throat> so I just really started to dig deeper in what could be off. And I was doing too much of the business on my own. I've been an entrepreneur almost all my adult life and I was doing too much of of the business on my own. And I realized that, but it was kind of, it it seems like it was too late. 
So I tried to get a business partner. I tried to sell the business. Um, even um, I had a client trying to help me turn it into a nonprofit and rearrange things so we could keep it all going. And it just, it just, nothing was really given. And for reasons, not just because of the center and the stress that that was creating, but other reasons too, my marriage fell apart during that time. And um, things were just kind of crumbling around me. And I really sat and I really asked, like, what am I, you know, I tried everything, but I kept getting, I had to let this, this center go, which was, um, it was a hard hit to my ego for sure. And people didn't know that I was really struggling as much as I did was, but I had to let them in at a certain point because my landlord wouldn't let me out of the lease. And I still had to, um, I had to figure out how to make this go. I had a client who came to me and said, why don't you just ask for help? Like just ask your community to help you. And that was, uh, that was hard. I did not want, want to ask and I didn't want to have to expose myself and I also didn't feel like it was the right thing to do but I really had no place else to to turn and I really thought I knew what giving and receiving was all about but I actually didn't because when I asked my community for help she helped me craft a letter and gave them lots of different ways that they could contribute Um, you know within a a week's time we had ten thousand dollars and that was that was enough to get me through what I needed at the time. But what was even more amazing was just the cards and letters I got, just the, the, the overall message. It was said in these words and so many of them was, thank you for giving me the opportunity to actually support and to help you. And it always chokes me up a little bit because it's, I really got it. And like, I didn't have this receiving thing down like I thought I did. Well, That really, the universe has a way of um, bringing the circumstances about for you to wake up to whatever you're to wake up to. And luckily, I did wake up during that time. But I did have to let the center go. And it was really just a dark night of the soul. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And in that disillusion of that business um, and spending some time in, I just was, I'm going to figure this out. And that's where the sacred wealth code really was born. Because what I as I dove into my Vedic astrology and my energy work and everything, I I just sat in it long enough and it started to reveal itself to me that I was really functioning from the shadow side of part of my wealth code. And even though I was functioning from the, you know, a lot of my gifts, no, but this was, this was causing me to be enough off balance that I wasn't experiencing um, the life and the wealth that I wanted. So, I vowed to not do things alone again because that was part of the shadow for me was um, doing it all by myself. And I was also stuck in being more of that administrator and I'm good at that stuff and I've been hired by other people to do that stuff, but it's not my best gift. I should hire that out. So I, I, hired, I borrowed some money and I hired a really wonderful business um, heart-centered coach. I hired an assistant and I went back to work with my Vedic astrology mentor and I uh, turned things around within a few months and started to do the deeper work I wanted to do with people and bring this work out into the world. And it's just been an amazing journey ever since, but I had to go, I was down on my knees for a while and I had to, I had to go there in order to have this work emerge. Yeah, isn't that true? That, um, and we're going to talk later about the shadow side. I want to get into that. So describe a little bit more what the Sacred Wealth Code is. Yeah, absolutely. So your Sacred Wealth Code is where your purpose and your prosperity, where they intersect in your soul blueprint. So I'm looking through the lens of a Vedic astrologer, among other things. But this in Vedic astrology, there's actually a... Uh, it's a science and it's an art. So there's a scientific a configuration of where your purpose planets and your prosperity planets, where they intersect. That's where we find wealth. And the definition that I'm, is my definition, and I, and I get this from my Vedic astrology training and my mentorship there, is the definition of wealth is everything you need to fulfill your purpose. That's what wealth actually is, what we need. And we just equate it to money because... That's a common currency of exchange, right? But it's the resources, the knowledge, even the relationships you need in order to do what you come here to do. So the sacred wealth code is where your purpose and your prosperity intersects 
in your soul blueprint. And right there is what I started to see uh, after just doing this work for so long is that's where your highest value gifts are. Like I call them your superpowers, but the things that not only are you so magnificent at if you give yourself the opportunity to explore them because you may not have, but also that will be incredibly valued in the world as well because they're the things that are so unique to you that you do so brilliantly um, that wealth always follows that. And not only that, that when you're giving your, your greatest gifts, you are, you are connected to your purpose. You, you can't help but be because that's what you've come here to do. Yeah, that's so true. And, and understanding your purpose. Um, and I'm just thinking of times that I, I'm sure there's people think, but I do that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my purpose. And why isn't that prosperity flowing towards me? <laughs> so, you, exactly. you know, those are the questions we have to ask. The, yep. And that can be that shadow side. Absolutely. Uh, it also can be a lot of times it, what was happening for me is I was stuck in, and I see this for a lot of people, I was stuck in what I was good at as opposed to what I was just, you know, really brilliant at. And I was doing some of that, but you only have so much bandwidth. You only have so much energetic currency in a day and in a lifetime. So, you know, if you use too much energy on what you're good at, and what you're good at is usually what people have told you you're good at, what you're familiar with, what you've gotten recognition for, uh, what you, and that includes money for. And maybe, you know, that maybe that is your brilliance, but it may not be. What you're good at doesn't tend to bring the rewards to you that are not just, again, not just money, but like where you feel truly fulfilled because people, you know, some people need, um, I was just talking with one of my clients before this and we were talking about how, um, someone who has just, you know, millions of dollars and doesn't really feel wealthy. And I know people who have less than that, much less than that, but maybe own their own home or have a certain amount in the bank and they feel, they feel, or have the right relationship and, and they feel wealthy. So, you know, that wealth part is a perception, but yeah, the that's, shadow, that's true. Yeah, well, we're going to come back. We have to take a break, and we'll come back and talk more about the shadow. So um, stay tuned. We'll come back and hear more from Prema. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day, we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. When your body is awakened, your spirit comes alive. Dana Canetto is a transformational guide, embodiment coach, and spiritual mentor assisting women in realigning with their truth and embodying who they are by connecting to the wisdom of their body. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio and the Dr. Pat Show Network for Body Divinity Radio with Dana Canetto. For more information on Dana and her services, visit danacanetto.com. That's D-A-N-A-C-A-N-N-E-T-O.com. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world 
into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Are you ready to thread your life with intuition? Intuit Apparel can help you do just that. This is not just about a piece of clothing. This is about a movement, an awakening, and staying centered in life. Your life. Intuitive and host of the radio show, Get Into It, Lynn Brown, was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself. Visit IntuitApparel.com now and wear your intuition with pride. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis. I'm talking with Prema Lee Guerreri and author of Your Sacred Wealth Code, Unlock Your Soul Blueprint for Purpose and Prosperity. So um, I want to get more into the basics of, of this Sacred Wealth Code. And now I know in the book you talk about it's made up of four pillars. So let's talk about those. Sure. So the Sacred Wealth Code, um, you know, there, and just a bit about the book itself is a workshop. It's a, a personal journey. It's very much of a playbook. There's even places to write in it because I'm taking you through a journey so you can identify your own sacred wealth code. Um, you know, like if I'm doing a reading for someone, I'll just give it to you. But I still like people to go through this process because there's so much you discover. So the book even starts with um, helping you to under, understand and identify what your sacred wealth code, what your sacred wealth dream is. Like, why do you even want the wealth you want? And once we get that down, we can move into the four pillars because you need to know that you're, you know, you're on, you're on the right path for, you know, you even know what you even want. So the first pillar of uh, the sacred wealth code is your purpose, harnessing your soul's big why. And you can think of it this way. We've got to understand what the purpose of why we want the wealth that we want. So think of it this way. If you write down the equation, why with an equal sign in the center and then purpose because anything you do there's a purpose to anything and then there's your purpose and is it coming through what it is you do lots of different ways to work with purpose but when it comes to wealth and in the sacred wealth code you need to know why you want that wealth dream that you want what does it really mean to you and so i take you through a process to be able to understand that deeper why what's the deep meaning in that and you may find that your wealth dream changes a little bit in this process because you need to get that aligned. So you're not driving along for this wealth dream and then realize that you've got somewhere you do not want to be. So in the uh, equation of um, purpose and prosperity, your purpose that you want wealth for, the purpose is like the vehicle that gets you to that intersection where um, your sacred wealth code is, where purpose and prosperity live. And the second pillar of the sacred wealth code is passion. And I call this the fulfillment, the essence of fulfillment. And this isn't necessarily like follow your passion, although that's a beautiful thing and that is, it can certainly work that way. But passion is energy. Um, you're enlivened. And when you're in your passion, it gives you energy. It takes energy to actually create anything. And it certainly takes energy to be able to um, be at that place of using your, your gifts. So I think of passion um, as the, the fuel that gets the vehicle to that intersection of purpose and prosperity. And I help you to identify where is your passion in life? How do you incorporate that daily? And if that's the work that you're doing or you want to do in the world, that's great. But let's also build passion in, in a way, so that you wake up and you know that there's, you know, you can engage in the world and life in a way that enlivens you and you do that so that you have the juice for sometimes doing the hard work it takes to really be on purpose. And the uh, third pillar is your greatest challenges, the unexpected gateway to wealth. And this is, you know, think of it this way. If you look back at your challenges, you can probably find at least some that you can see the greatest blessing in. And when you're looking at the challenge, in fact, imagine a challenge you're facing right now. And the, what I'd like you to be able to do is see that there is something in that for you without having to wait years 
you know, down the road to be able to see that there's a blessing, but to be able to trust that there is and then embrace the challenge because it's a part of you that's just kind of locked up maybe. And this is where the shadow lives. So it's kind of like a big rock on a tender plant and that's your gift and it was trying to grow, but it's, it's covered up by old beliefs or patterns or um, maybe a soul challenge that you've taken on on a soul level. And so we needed to get through those. We need to dig into them, embrace them and find out what the gift is that's inside that challenge, just like the antidote to a poisonous plant will always grow next to it, that there's always a gift in the challenge. So I take you through a process of discovering that in the third pillar so that as you approach um, choosing your archetypes or letting them choose you, you're armed with more of your high-value gifts. Um, I'm sorry, that's pillar four. The third pillar, which I didn't mention, is the... um, high value gifts and that's wielding your superpowers. So you've heard me talk about high value gifts. I take you through some process to help you to identify just maybe the ones that you are aware of. And then the fourth pillar helps you to identify at least one you're not aware of, of your gifts so that when we move into the last part of the book, which is, uh, well, it's like second, second to the last, which is articulating and letting your archetypes choose you, you choose them. And then we figure out how, what to do with them and how to use them. Well, and you talk about the difference of, of, of there's high value gifts and there's things that you're good at. And how, how do we identify, how do you people identify that? Yeah. So everyone just think of something that you know that you're good at. You know that you're good at. And um, we have a lot of things that we're good at. And then you want to just also, uh, you know, is that something that really enlivens you when you do that? Um, would you be happy doing that if you weren't even getting paid for doing that? Maybe you're not getting paid for doing that. Uh, do you have a deep sense of meaning when you're using that particular gift? When you are using your high value gifts, maybe you think of something that whether you're getting paid for it or not, whether it's creating wealth for you or not, that's something that you would do no matter what that if you just feel at some level, maybe, you, maybe you're even afraid to do that, you do that thing or, or give that gift, but there's some part of you that just feels like, you know, you were, you were born to, you know, with this uh, innate uh, talent or gift. So the, the different, you know, that's just a little, a, a snippet of, of how to tune into whether it's just something I'm good at. There's usually frustration that comes along with something that I'm just good at, you're always going to do things that you're just good at. And you, and that's great. We want you to, but don't, you, you got to be in your gifts too. If you're not in your gifts, you're just doing what you're good at. You know, there's that deeper meaning, that purpose isn't there. And you're not, you're typically uh, a little on the worn outside. You're not enlivened. Yeah. So I can totally relate to that. And probably too, that you're not, you even talked about it, how you don't ask for help and you don't ask for, you don't know how to delegate and pass on these jobs that you're good at, but you're good at it. It keeps you from really developing your high value gifts and you haven't passed on these other things that somebody else could do, um, which allows you the time to go into really embracing your, your, your passion and your purpose and your high, your, your really, your talents, your, those innate talents that you were talking about. Right. Well, it also would give, Somebody else who the thing that you're good at might be somebody else's brilliance. And that this is I would love to see a world where we're really gifting each other uh, more than we are. So then by you letting go of the control and, and stepping, you know, maybe on the edge where it's not so comfortable for you and stepping into your gifts and letting go of something else and, and delegating something, you invite somebody else into their gifts if it's their brilliance. And, um, and that's 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 a beautiful thing for all of us. Yeah, so I can see that. Like we're creating a new team at Woman Wisdom. We have this transformation team because I'm retiring and I'm, I'm part of this team just because I have to pass on the legacy and pass on the information. I'm the historian. But um, I'm seeing the group and it's like seeing everybody's coming forward with those gifts. And I think of, we do circle leadership. And I think of that as everybody steps into leadership with their gifts. So if your gift is marketing, that's when you lead. And if your gift is organizing an event, you step in. And so this, this leadership rotates based on people's gifts. And it's a great collaborative of leadership model. Yes, absolutely. And that's, and I mean, just imagine, everyone just imagine for a moment, because this is really the world that, that um, my mission and purpose is, is behind, is, is a world where we're all really using our divine gifts 
And in that, in turn, we gift each other in that. We don't all have to be on all the time. We all don't have to do absolutely everything. And all, everybody's much happier because even if you're um, using a lot of energy and working hard, uh, which you will using your divine gifts sometimes, it's it's very different than when you're you're sort of trudging along doing something that you're good at or doing something you don't want to do. You're you're sort of happy to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, well, let's get back to because in all this also comes up the shadow, <laughs> and you know yes, it, it 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 peeks its head up. You know, I mean, we're human, so it's going to. It shows up in groups, and you know, there's group shadows and there's individual shadows, and and we all we all see them. And sometimes we're blind to our, our own shadows. Absolutely. We absolutely are. And in fact, I think that's one of the gifts of relationship, whether we like it or not, is um, sometimes that's, you know, it's, it helps us to um, realize, you know, where we are in the shadow. So the shadow is, uh, there's so much power in the shadow. And of course, look at, you know, there's a, we're living in a, a dimension that does have contrast of, of light and dark in it as well. I look at the shadow as parts of ourselves that are um, old beliefs, stuck in the past, maybe even a soul challenge, typically much younger parts of ourselves um, that are really uh, in fear in some way and are kind of like a a young part of us, maybe that's sitting in a a room with no windows, no doors, and doesn't realize that we're an adult with all kinds of maturity and capability. And so we are they're kind of running this, those patterns are, are running the show and keeping us in a less, lesser version of our gift. Now there, you know, I, I teach in the book different ways to embrace your shadow and literally the energy of it is, is I, and in fact, in the archetype descriptions, there's a, there's a pretty hefty description about the shadow because I want you to see where you are maybe stuck in the shadow so that you can have some ahas. And then I give you a pathway to help walk out of the shadow as well. It's just like, you know, you just have to walk back into the light. And there's lots of different transformational processes to do that. But there's a lot of power locked up in the shadow. And collectively, I think we're seeing a lot of that. Um, What we don't like that we're seeing on the outside is some reflection of the inside. So we all need our own that we need to do. Yeah, that's so, so true. And uh, yeah, and we're going to, well, we're going to, because you mentioned the archetypes and we're going to go into that. And when we come back from our break, we have to take down the break. So let's stay tuned and let's learn about the archetypes that are part of this, your sacred wealth code. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Thrive is what we experience when our mind, body, and soul operate as one. When we thrive, we excel on all levels. Thrive is the mindset that matters. It is essential to our being. Have you ever found yourself looking for the instruction manual on how to thrive? You'll find everything you need to help you feel strong, powerful, and peaceful in your own body. So don't waste any more time. Visit thrivebygen.com today. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404.
Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit SpiritFireRetreatCenter.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stainis. We're talking about your sacred wealth code with the author Prema Lee Guerreri. Um, Prema, would you please give your website and what, what you have available for people when they go to your website? Yeah, I'll give you the easiest portal into my website is your sacred wealth code. Actually, it's sacredwealthcode.com, sacredwealthcode.com. My company is Solutionary, spelled S-O-U-L, but this is the easiest way to get there, sacredwealthcode.com. You can grab the book there, and if you do, there's some free gifts. You can get it from Amazon, too, but there's a, a link right there where you can grab it off my website and get some free gifts, including resources that um, processes I take you through in the book that actually I can lead you through um, – because I've got some meditations you can just um, processes you can just download that go with the book as well. And I do sacred wealth code readings. I have programs that are built around this work for um, just mastering this in yourself and your life, but also in your business as well. And all that is, um, oh, and I have a really cool thing coming out soon, which is the sacred wealth code card Oracle deck. I had 23 paintings painted by a beautiful artist. And um, so pretty soon we'll have a, an Oracle deck of cards that go with the archetypes. So I'm excited about that. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. So everybody check out sacredwealthcode.com. Okay, so we're just now going to go into archetypes. We've talked, we just touched on it, but we're going to go more into what the archetypes are because you developed them for the sacred wealth. Um, and so share, share some of those archetypes and, um, and how they relate to this sacred wealth code. Yeah, so first of all, archetypes, the reason for even having archetypes is, first of all, it just kind of downloaded through me. I mean, I, I didn't, it, it came through, and this is the way it came through. I've been doing this work organically with people for a while, and the archetypes started to show up. And then uh, when I wrote the book, it was like they really developed, um, which has been really fun. Now, archetypes, um, archetypal language is a soul language. And Vedic astrology is the soul language, and Vedic astrology has a lot of mythology. But I'm I'm a, I live in the West, and the archetypes came in <clears throat> as more of Western type names. Like if I say the teacher or the leader or the visionary or the merchant, these are all you know things you could connect with right away. There's a whole story when I just say that word that you might have. What's different about these archetypes is um, the description of them and what they stand for. Again, is for standing right at that inner section of purpose and prosperity for sacred wealth. So for instance, like the leader archetype in the sacred wealth code system uh, is actually ruled by the sun. Each planet, there's three archetypes and then the north and south node of the moon, there's one archetype for each, the mystic and the magician. And the leader, for instance, you know, I've got qualities here that the leader has as confident and brilliant, purposeful and courageous and committed and a few more. And then each archetype has a mantra. Um, the leaders as I lead from the heart and as a soul desire to live up to your highest potential and guide others to theirs for the greater good of all. And the purpose for the leader is to live in the present, free from the past, and create an ideal future. And then again, there's the shadow side, which is arrogant, narcissistic, addicted to power, and over-controlling. And along with, you know, description that really helps you to understand your gifts or how they could be used or how they're valued and also where you might be stuck in the shadow, which is when you start to understand that, you can realize, oh, I've got some gifts. I've got some divinity locked up in that shadow somewhere. And you can get a little bit more excited about doing the work around there. Uh, there's also 
uh, what I call tapping in questions. So I'm all about helping you to connect with your own soul blueprint because I believe you feel it all the time anyway. And so I've got some questions that I teach you a process of dropping into your heart. And I have some questions here for each of the archetypes. So you can tap into what's your archetype's greatest gifts and talents. And I give you a list, but I want you to tap in on a daily basis to find out, like, really what's yours that wants to come forward at this point in life or for this particular project? And then also, what's the inspired action that you could take to actually put that gift into action? Because it's not enough to know it. You've got to bring it down to what I call the final frontier and move it through your flesh, move it through your body. And then also we do that for the, uh, for the shadow as well. So that's um, one example of one of the archetypes, the leader. Mm-hmm. Well, how do, how do people identify their archetype? And, yeah. and do they have more than one? Because I was reading through and like, yeah. okay, well, how, am I, <laughs> how do I yeah. select my archetype? So you, you identify your archetypes by going through the process in the book, by actually doing the, I call them um, wealth focuses. There's, there's um, a section of questions at the end of each chapter. There's processes built into each chapter of the book. It's not like... Um, it's really doable. I want you all to know it's really doable. It's not huge and a ton of stuff to do, but it's very meaningful. You'll start to reveal about what wealth is for you. And then I went through the four pillars. Then you're armed to understand part of how you're wired for wealth as it is. And and maybe have an idea of where you might be stuck in your shadow and have an idea of where your some of your gifts are. And then when you start to read the archetypes, and I encourage you to read them all, and then notice the ones you gravitate towards. And then, or you say, oh, that's me. And go ahead and make a list of those or bookmark those pages. And then you want to go back through again and really ask the very deep question is, is this one of my high? Here's, here's the back door question to the soul. It's if I tell myself the truth, and I give you this in the book, if I tell myself the truth, is, is, does this archetype hold my highest value gifts? Is it one of my sacred wealth code? You'll, and I teach you also how to t- tap in with your own intuition in the process of the book. So um, most people have, you'll get a yes or a no, and it's a refinement process. And then you'll pick some maybe that aren't, um, that things are you're just good at. And that's okay. Um, it's, again, it's a learning process. Then I teach you in the end of the book how to actually embrace and start to use your sacred wealth code archetypes, which I en- end up calling your sacred wealth council. I mean, this is like your, the best part of you and, and you're like with your guides. Um, but also there are, to answer your question, how many? Most people typically, when I look at their chart and give them their archetypes, have three to five archetypes in their sacred wealth code, just depending on the combination of, of planets. Um, and in fact, a fun thing, and I didn't mention, if you go to sacredwealthcode.com, there is a, a quiz that I put together there where you can take a quiz to find one of your archetypes, and it's right there on that page. And that's a fun thing to do, and you get a, you get a beautiful printout of your archetype and everything. And there's a nice training on the back end that actually does talk about the shadow too as well. Mm-hmm. So once you identify your archetype, and like I said, you, and you do have more than one, and, then, and that's kind of that alchemy of bringing it all together, I would think. How how can you how can we work with them, and and what are they going to learn by making use of these archetypes? Yeah, so it, it's like getting to know a really good friend. Okay, so it's like getting to know uh, a good a part of yourself. And so in the book, I give you a lot of different practices and processes and different ways that you could connect in. So first and foremost, um, setting a time to actually read read your archetype and get to know this part of yourself, uh, to tune in with the tapping in questions I give you. Uh, Maybe, and also I suggest simple things even like, well, what are colors or clothes or music that, or art even that... um, inspires, like if you're the leader or you're a visionary or maybe you've got the queen, what what helps bring that out in you, helps you connect more with that energy? And if you will actually tune in with them regularly, like in my Sacred Wealth Circle, um, that uh, program where we really just focus on the Sacred Wealth Code, uh, I, I actually give you different meditations and ways, and there's some in the book too, um, and through the portal you can access, so that you can have this dialogue of guidance. And when you start to do it, you realize that 
oh, this is a conversation I can have. And what I find with my clients, um, like, for instance, one of my clients, um, she is, she calls herself a, an, an alpha woman's um, coach because she is a very strong woman herself and she realizes that um, really strong women sometimes have a hard time in relationship, really successful women. And so that's something that she has overcome. She also used to be a divorce attorney. But when I met her, she was like um, a life coach and she was kind of just helping people generally. But, but going through the process of understanding what her archetypes were, first of all, she didn't realize she had a really, she has a connector and she's really deeply intuitive. And, um, and that's something I work with with all my uh, people is intuitive. So we connected her with that part of herself, which also connected her to a very, the connector connected her to a very feminine part of herself. And when she did that, she was able to realize that uh, she had been missing, uh, she wanted to help these stronger women, but now she knew how to connect with them and connect with them on a feminine level much more than she was because she was just in the directive masculine. The other thing is that she realized she has an honorable warrior and she was stuck in the shadow side of the honorable warrior. One of the shadows is being the rescuer. So she was trying to rescue women that um, were didn't really want to be helped. So um, it was costing her a lot of time and energy. And so when she recalibrated that and we cleared those patterns, and then she was able to shift her business around. And she's doing she's, she's doing beautifully now. She's working with the high powered women that she wants to. She's got her own mastermind and private clients. She's creating a whole other program now, and she's working with a couple of organizations. And um, and she she couldn't be happier. But she's had to embrace in this whole process to let go of that rescuing and also embrace more of her feminine side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of work. And what I love about your book too is you every chapter has these questions and you can write in and you, you, you know, so it isn't something you're just going to learn the knowledge of this. You've got to dig in and do this inner work as, as in anything, if you're going to change your life, you, you, you know, do the work. Yes. And, and you talked about, and you did bring it up about taking action and that's, that's part of it is um, taking action. And, and I love the word you use the term inspired action. And how is that Absolutely. different than just going through our daily lives doing things that we tend to do? Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the, yeah, the difference in inspired action is we're tuning into our own divinity. I teach you a process um, of dropping into your heart, which I'm happy to do with you all. I know we're going to go on break soon, but uh, um, uh, uh, so when you tune into your heart and you really learn to ask these uh, kinds of questions that I ask you, they really come in through the back door so you connect to your soul and you start to get answers that are undeniable. They're truth for you. And then I also teach you to ask for an inspired action and you will be given uh, and the inspired action is one you can take today. You will be given something to do today that that quality, that archetype, or around whatever project you want um, that you're bringing to the table um, with the archetypes. And the so this is like in spirit. It's it's inspired um, yeah. from within okay. you, not something. Okay, so let's let's you. do that when we come back from our break. We'll, I'm gonna. Uh, you mentioned you could do an exercise with people, so let's do that. We're gonna take a short break. We'll be back with Premier Lee Guerreri. Are you ready to thread your life with intuition? Intuit Apparel can help you do just that. This is not just about a piece of clothing. This is about a movement, an awakening, and staying centered in life. Your life. Intuitive and host of the radio show, Get Into It, Lynn Brown, was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself. Visit IntuitApparel.com now and wear your intuition with pride. Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the Rad Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com, that's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 9 Discover the healing medicine from the giant monkey tree frog Cambo. Cambo practitioner Ginny Rutherford and professional psychic Todd Rolson have come together for lively discussions of alternative healing medicines from the Amazon. Ginny and Todd bring you Cambo Talk Radio. 
Tune in each Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear from guests all over the world with real life stories and the medicinal benefits of Cambo. For more information, visit CamboKiss.com. Calling all moms, it's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit EmpoweringEnergy.com. That's Empowering with letters N-R-G.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and we're talking with Prema Lee Guerrero, author of Your Sacred Wealth Code, Unlock Your Soul Blueprint for Purpose and Prosperity. And I think you can all see, you know, hear, um, understand, you know, from listening to Prema, you know, that there's a lot here to work on towards creating this. Uh, I love it, this intersection of purpose and prosperity. So, Prema, you talked about you could lead people in a little... Um, I guess a meditation, so to speak, about how, tapping into their heart to get to this place of inspired action. So I'd love for you to do that right now. Absolutely. Let's just let's just go for it. So if you're not driving, close your eyes and just take a couple of deep, full breaths. Breath always brings you present. And put your hand on your heart, your heart being the field of heart, the portal to connect into your own divinity the divinity, and also take a moment to breathe in and out through your heart. Just opening, just like a flower being willing to open on a sunny day. And then take a moment to recognize your mind. Your mind is a tool, and as brilliant as it is, it's also incredibly busy with some things you're maybe not aware of and some that you are. We want to bring the mind and the heart together. And when we do, there is this, just this powerful, beautiful marriage where the mind can then follow the wisdom that comes through your heart. So you could just imagine you have a slide or a stairway between your head and your heart. And we're going to take that mind and drop it down through your nasal cavity, down through the top of your throat, the base of your throat, top of your chest, right down into the very center of your chest. And with your hand on your chest, just take a deep, full breath in and out through your heart. Allow yourself to land. Trust this is happening. We're moving quickly, but I'm holding the energy here and you're doing beautifully. And we're going to let this question drop into your heart. In fact, imagine that your heart is just this beautiful, warm pool where you just relax. And this question is like a pebble. I'm going to throw this pebble into the pond of your heart. And you're just going to sit back and watch the ripples and notice what comes up for you. And there'll be just a couple of questions. And the first one is, if I did know what it is that my heart is most desiring for me right now around wealth, if I did know what it is that my heart is most desiring for me around wealth, what might that be? Just let that question drop in and open up to whatever answer comes up for you, whether that is words or vision or feeling. 
and go with that first thing. Don't deny the first thing that came up. And then let this question drop in, just asking like you're asking yourself. If I have that, if I'm doing that, if I am that, what is that going to make possible for me in my life? What's that going to make possible for me? And just open up. And the final question, which is going to take you to your inspired action, now that you know what it is your heart desires, what it will make possible, which is really the why it's important. If I did know one inspired action that I could take that would support me in what my heart wants for me today around wealth, what might that be? What's that inspired action my soul wants me to take to align me with that wealth today? And just tune into that. Be open to the first thing that comes up without judgment. That would be your mind. And it's a good thing to write this down and commit to doing it. Now, I know we went through this quickly, but you'll be able to listen to the replay of this interview. And if you didn't have something come up, it will reveal itself to you throughout your day. It might be something someone says or something you read somewhere. Um, it'll, it'll, It'll drop in for you if you didn't. So don't worry if you didn't get an inspired action, but almost always you do. And then you can take a deep, full breath. Bring yourself back to presence. Now, here's the really important part. You actually have to do it. You have to commit to doing it. So if it's not something you can do right away, you know, pull out your calendar, put an alarm on, and block off the time to make sure that you follow through and trust yourself on your own inner guidance and let the divine kick your feet in the right direction by you moving them. Great. Thank you, Prema. I have some action steps myself to do, too. <laughs> you want to share what came up with for you, Chris? Um, well, it's something I'm working on. Like I, uh, with the Woman Wisdom book, I had a group um, at a church down in, in Oregon um, bought the book for a women's retreat, and it occurred to me I could approach a lot of New Thought churches because there's a lot of women's groups out there or they have women's retreats in their churches to, because it's a great study um, book to reflect on the divine feminine and so you know, I just need to get out there and get letters out to people. And um. that's perfect. I love that for you and for um, and for the organization. Or you could delegate that. You could write one letter and have someone else send those out for you. True. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so great. So we just have a, a, another uh, minute or two. So what um, what last piece of advice do you have for our listeners? So your, your soul already knows what it is that you um, want to be doing, um, that you, what your gifts are, um, what your purpose is. And it's really important to tune in regularly and listen like we just did. And then the most important thing is, is to actually bring it down to, from your soul to the soles of your feet and take action. What you have to give the world, the world wants from you more than ever. Uh, and it's like, well, your gifts are the key to a specific lock that the world is locked up in. And by you being willing to step into your gifts and give them, uh, it is what will unlock the present and the future that we all want. Mm -hmm. And the world is waiting for our gifts, everybody's gift. And to acknowledge, you know, that we all have a gift and came here for that. So thank you so much, Prema. Totally a pleasure to be here with you. Thanks so much for having me, and thanks for all the great work that you're doing. Oh, thank you. Um, so everybody check out her book, Your Sacred Wealth Code, Unlock Your Soul Blueprint for Purpose and Prosperity. Lots of great work that you can do for yourself and uh, identifying your archetypes, your sacred wealth code, all that. So go to www.sacredwealthcode.com, and you can... Um, learn more about her book and as she said when you buy the book on her website there's all sorts of other gifts that you can get so i'm chris stanis the founder of woman of wisdom foundation and i also would love for you to check out the woman of wisdom book that i compiled and it's got lots of great inspiring stories and we're all about stories and it's got art and poetry and um 
transcriptions of some of the talks of the great women we've had at the conference. So it's a it's an exploration of the divine feminine from many voices, and it's also available on Kindle, where you where you actually get the color art, which is fabulous. So you can get that on Kindle, and you can check the book out at womanofwisdom.org. Um, a portion of the proceeds from the book benefit Woman of Wisdom. And um, yeah, and also we have an event coming up. You can check it on our website. July 8th is a, an event we do with the Mankind Project. So men and women coming together and working on working on our gender issues. And we're really focusing what's going on right now in our country. That we're going to do a lot of deep work on, you know, the misogyny and the the oppression of the, of the especially for women. Um, that that we've experienced and working with men and women together and creating that love tone that how we can heal these issues um and coming together like that is just fabulous so check out that it's july 8th it's over in redmond at a private home in a lovely garden setting and um yeah we'd love to see you there so we're at the end of the show i hope everybody has a great weekend we'll be back next friday been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.